Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we're going to have a lot of news to go cover throughout these, well, next few hours, next few days, because as you guys do know, unfortunately, but also fortunately at the same exact time, I'm going to talk about that in a quick second, there has been a really big leak when it comes to Insomniac in regards to a lot of stuff. I'm going to be making sure to go cover up a lot of this type of stuff on this channel, so make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on for that one, but as of today, we'll have probably a few extra bonus videos, but this is both a really good thing for all of us who are very intrigued and information going and seeing all the well just various aspects of the leaks what games are coming out and everything else but on top of this some very very intriguing topics coming out too as well now first and foremost I feel heartbroken for insomniac if you guys do not know I'll kind of cover it maybe throughout the video but there was a huge hack in terms of a lot of internal information powerpoints details contractual rights and everything else in between and this is what's been ongoing right now so I'm gonna go talk about one of the bigger things in regards now to the Disney contract now it's probably i think one of the bigger things out there when it comes to ex exclusive exclusivity deals and everything else so Let's go talk about this. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch ring down below. We also have the $500 giveaway for the PS5 Slim or just $500 cash. And let's go and dive on into it. So first and foremost, I want to go and cover up this topic. We'll have a few videos throughout today. Probably some of just various good titles. But right now, one of the bigger leaks that came out from the Insomniac hack is in regards to the X-Men license and also the Marvel Wolverine. First and foremost is that when it comes to X-Men, I'm sure you guys know, is not necessarily owned by PlayStation. They do not own the rights to the IP itself. But as well, we do have the Wolverine game. So the very big high picture, and I do want to apologize first and foremost when it comes to covering the leaks, leaks but as of right this second, they are widespread. They are everywhere. Like, there's, if I could go and like hide them from the devs themselves, I would. But when it comes to this, it does seem like the Marvel's uh, Wolverine game actually might be potentially delayed until 2026. And some of the internal documentations, we're actually now seeing some other various games, such as maybe a potential Venom game, which we'll cover in a second, uh, over for maybe 2025, more of a combination of the Spider-Man 2 game, and as well the Wolverine game, and more so in regards to the X-Men, because obviously I believe Wolverine is an X-Man, you know, that's something strange, and that's going to be maybe potentially delayed. But first and foremost, they're trying to go and cover this into a very intriguing aspect, where uh, these are a lot of leaks that are coming out over here, this regards over to Flint Dog, showing the X-Men licensing terms for PlayStation and PC. So, this is some big, big news, and the high picture is that PlayStation, they're kind of calling them out on PlayStation a little bit, which I'll talk on their discussion, but they basically have to go and sell 6 million units of a specific contractual game for them to actually even start making good profit, to a very intriguing business strategy along the lines of, number one, they're hoping that the game they make will sell into the tens of millions of units, but as well also trying to go and incentivize and leverage these really big games to go and essentially sell consoles, that they will make money on console sales, but as well also why they're maybe potentially comprising a lot of these things into bundles. So as you guys probably know, things like Call of Duty, things like God of War Ragnarok, things like Spider-Man, all have their own bundles composed all together. So let's go talk about this and break down to the information, because there's a lot of really juicy stuff, especially for this one. This will be my first video on the leak itself. As well, if you guys want to give me your thoughts and comments and like as well. So basically, on the play, uh, PlayStation console and PC, they want to have $621 million comprised of $120 million for development commitment for each required title. So another $120 million in the aggregate for the provisional fourth title. So basically saying for this one, they want to at least go and commit $120 million to making sure the games are good. Uh, this also regards now to Insomniac, which as I'm sure you guys have known, Insomniac has done very well when it comes to the Spider-Man IP. This is basically PlayStation going up to them in the corporate world stating, hey, like, you made Spider-Man, we kind of trust you, the Spider-Man games are good, well-received, well-reviewed, they sell well, we want to go and kind of continue milking this gravy train. So we're going to make sure we can have $120 million allocated towards any type of, like, say, the X-Men games. They want to have at least a $30 million marketing commitment for each required title, too, as well. And if they make another fourth one, they'll give another $15 million. And they want to have at least a $9 million recoupable advance for each required title, and another $9 million in case there is another adjugate provisional fourth title as well. 
They also have like a little bit of a set deadline where they want to release all games by 2035. So in theory, like if you have a big contract with this one, number one, you don't mess around with Marvel. Like Marvel is one of the biggest entertainment blocks in the entire planet. And if you're PlayStation, you don't want them going to Xbox. You definitely don't want them going to piece like PC games or EA or even like Nintendo. You want to make sure you can lock these on in for these licensing rights. And also, they want to sell all these games through at least 2038 and later if Marvel allows us to continue. So this is basically a crazy long contract. This is like a longer than the Activision Call of Duty contract coming out. It's like a 15-year contract at this point. So between now and December 31st of 2035, Marvel cannot release or announce any X-Men games on console, PC, streaming, or use an X-Men character as a competitive advantage in a game. So example, plays Wolverine and Ultimate Alliance exclusively on Xbox. X-Men characters can appear in multi-family Marvel games, so think of Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Marvel retains the rights to children's games in certain X-Men games from the 1990s, but they cannot release or announce these within 45 days before or after release of announce of any other of our X-Men games. So basically as well for these contracts, stating, hey, this is like huge information. Like, hey, if you want to release a random X, like, say, Wolverine or X-Men mobile game, you got to wait until at least like, you know, 45 days afterwards. You also kind of keep us in the loop, and as well, we own most of the major rights for these games. This is big. So first and foremost, a $600 million deal is ridiculous. But as well, they do seem like they have to have actual proper terminologies for it. So the termination thing is probably the biggest thing to know. I'm going to go cut the thing above it. But basically, neither party has a right to terminate the agreement for convenience. So basically, they can't be like, hey, like we just want to do it for like less work with Xbox. So like We're over this contract. We got to like do proper whatever. However, if we do not sell at least 6 million units on PS5 and PC combined of one of the three major platform titles in the first year after its PlayStation console release, either party may terminate the agreement. So it's also at least kind of nice for, like, I feel that I think Marvel is probably the more bigger leverager here. But in case, like, let's say PlayStation, they put, like, $100 million into a game, and it only sells 500,000 copies. I would assume most Marvel games, unless they're really bad, are probably going to go and sell way above that. But there is an off chance that maybe Marvel, like, for some odd reason is lame. Like, no one likes X-Men for whatever reason. I don't know. Whatever it might be. Big cancelization, whatever. So at least they both have a way to back out. But I think they want to keep this either way, because any exclusive games they can have with Marvel games, even for X-Men... They want to farm that, milk it, and build it so they have an Xbox lead, or at least place them to have an Xbox lead over Xbox. If we terminate, we must go pay Marvel a $9 million breakup fee, a very expensive breakup, plus all unpaid portions of all guarantees as well. If Marvel terminates, the foregoing fees are waived, so they, don't, they can almost have like a really nice contract for Marvel's side. The result is that we would not de uh, develop any further titles under this agreement, but we can continue to sell all titles released before termination. So basically, let's go and say they release one game. It does okay. Let's say the Wolverine game, and then maybe the next game was just a mediocre game. All parties are like gonzo. They get to keep on making the money off that an original Wolverine game. So this also kind of ties into why they might be doing bundles, because the 6 million units would also be factored into a bundle. So let's go and say they want to sell the brand new PS5 Slim or even a $450 one with the game itself. We have seen some of the bundles actually selling on cheaper prices, even with Spider-Man, etc. With all of this, one thing, big thing to note is that that would also be included. So let's say people want to buy a console or even buy a cheaper console, Christmas present, whatever. If they go and sell some of these consoles overall, it makes a lot of sense. Like it will add to it. You sell, I could say, a million consoles with bundles and you're mainly only selling bundles for restocks at Walmart, Amazon, or whatever. Guess what? All of those numbers... They make sense. Like, at that end of the day, well, they're going to be added towards those sales. And, I mean, if you even sell an extra 500000 that does add up towards the fees. And sometimes these fees are having a chance to go talk to Marvel and say, hey, we sold 10 million copies. Let's go make this last even longer. It's also a big win. So, apparently, the Marvel warranty does kind of seem like they got a really good deal. Digital games, they get 9 to 18% of net sales. Physical games is 19 to 26%, which is ridiculous. So basically, they want to go and also sell digital. I want to say this for the future because that's a huge topic point for why games are going digital. That's ridiculous. And then DLC is also a huge number. So 19 to 26% of net sales. I'm probably going to assume a lot of these games will not have big major DLCs. And then there's the hardware bundles I was just talking about. 35 of 40% of the wholesale bundle price. Calculated as follows, number of units, X wholesale bundle price, X applicable royalty rate for bundle, X applicable royalty rate for games. So basically saying they will also be getting a cut when it comes to them selling these bundles, but at the same time it's a mixture of like them not having to pay like a $9 million breakup fee, or them somehow losing on the contract too as well for that 6 million unit mark. 
So this is nuts. Like this is some big deals. This is like a almost a billion dollar contracting licensing terms over time. And as well, it makes a lot of sense on why they keep on pushing for this one. It does kind of seem like PlayStation doesn't have the best, best deal, but at the same time, they're probably just trying to lock in a Marvel contract nonetheless. So there's a lot more news I want to cover. This will probably be the bigger ones I would say for this because it comes to the X-Men games coming out and also in regards to the Wolverine game and potential delays on it. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch room down below and make sure you guys are subscribed for that $500 giveaway or PS5 Slim. Give me your thoughts and comments. We'll have a lot of videos all throughout today because these leagues are looking big and a lot.